medicine? Over in glory. I just have yes, to sir. Yes, sir. I'm doing this.
should tell me. Because that is, you know, it, to me, it is to encourage other people. That's right. Now, and that's why, sister, I, I, I want you to believe. That's right. God's going to take care of your problem. Yeah. Yeah. You may not think it, but you it, just tell that devil, hey, listen. If I'm good for that one, because if I do anything, they can do it for everybody else. Give the Lord a hand clap of 
It's a book of lying prophets. It's a book of death. It's a book of captivity, of wrath. But in this dark chapter, in this dark book, there is a well-knit verse of Scripture, chapter 11, and I just want to paraphrase it because God is saying, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to do you good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. You may be here tonight and you may be in a dark chapter in your life. I got news for you, the same God that told his people in Babylon as they were in captivity.
referred to as hopelessness. I'm a man, and I'm just going to die. But an old tree, an old, an old dried up tree over here, it can live again. But Isaiah said the Spirit that the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the me, to bind up the broken heart. Man, 
sin. And yes, he disobeyed. And yes, he overrode a check from God. And yes, he got engaged in a heated battle. And yes, he was cut off from his life source because he disobeyed. But the Bible says that God is a God of hope. God is a God of hope. And the Bible says that God came. God came. Let me tell you something now. Don't you ever count God out of your situation. Hey, if you got a lion rooster, 
in your life, one that's standing up and crowing every day, reminding you of your past mistake and your past failure. You need to cut that man's head off. That's home. That's home. He was a tough old bird. We gave him, so I know he was a tough old bird. <laughs> It's all right. Amen. Yes. You know, I like to have fun. I like to have fun in church. I'm serious. I'm serious. But yes, I'm right. Hopeless. Wow. Yes. The Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. Heart broken me. Reared himself in tears. No hope. No promise of forgiveness. No hope. For restoration, he had seen Jesus crucified with Tokus. There was a little woman, Tekoa, came to David. She said, we are like spilled water. Can't be gathered up again. Anybody here ever spilled any water? When I was a young boy, we didn't have a well. We had a spring. And that thing was probably a mile or so, seemed like, down under the hill. And as a little boy, about the age of my grandson, I, you know, I was required to go and get water, bring it to the house. And one day, I mean, it was really hot, and I was went down to the spring and got a can of water. We had those lard cans that you know, had the rails on the side and we would put a belt through them, you know. And that's what we'd go and get water in. And as I was coming up that hill almost to the house, that, that, that belt slipped and broke. I don't remember why and that water just spilled out on the ground. And I stood there and I watched it just soak up. I couldn't pick it back up. I couldn't gather it back up. I put it back in that bucket. That's right. Went on to the house, fixed the bucket. As I came back by that place, where the, and it was a hot day. I mean, the sun was beaming down hot. And as I came by that place where I spilled that water, there wasn't any sign of it. It was gone. <laughs> it was gone. Uh, spilled water. Said so we are like spilled water. We can't be gathered back together again. What happened to that? i tell you what happened. God sent his son down and it beamed down on that water and it yes. took it and it brought it back up into his presence. Amen. Back up into the heavens where he was. And there he began to clean that water up. He had to take out all the dirt, all the trash and all the junk and everything that was in that water that had been spilled. And then what he did with it, Brother Johnny, is you know what he did with it? He took that spilled water that was so dirty and filthy and cleaned it up, and he sent it back out again in a beautiful lay pile that it laid down back up on the earth. God said, I can take you and I can do the same thing with you. You may be here tonight, you may not hear nothing but spilled water, but I got some good news for you. I can bring you back into my presence. I can clean you up and I can clean you up. Yeah. 
He said, if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And there is not a number in that. There is not no parameters on it. There is not a sin on it. There are no limitations on it. If we will confess our sins, he said, he is just, he is faithful, he will forgive us, and he will cleanse us. Man. But having said that, let me make this emphatically clear. God's hope is not a license for us to willfully commit sin. Let me say that again. I don't want you to misunderstand me tonight. Yes, if you'll confess, he will forgive. But God's Come on. mercy Come on. is not a license for us to willfully commit sin. That's right. Amen. It is not permission to live like hell on Monday through Saturday and play a saint on Sunday. Because sin will not go unpunished. There is correction for disobedience. Forgiveness is not a blessing to be taken lightly because it costs God his only son. And if you will take seriously the guilt of sin, you will take seriously the grace of forgiveness. That's right. Sin will not go unpunished. Mm -hmm. There is correction. That's right. See, Paul, that great apostle, knew what a scoundrel he'd been. He knew what a mess he was. He said, when I do good, evil is present. Uh -huh. That which I would do, I don't do. And that which I don't want to do, he said, I find myself doing it. That's he said, right. I see it all in these fingers. That's right. So if there's anybody here tonight that thinks they're perfect and can do no wrong, just fold your wings, Flash. Because <laughs> we're all made for the same old stuff. Amen. And we're all engaged in a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. That's right. But Paul said, my hope is not in this life. That's right. All right. That's right, brother. My hope is not in the things that I possess. Right. My hope is in Jesus Christ. You know, one of my favorite songs is Victory in Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our hope is in Christ. Amen. Amen. Ephesians lets us know that we were without Christ, had, had no hope, and without God. But he said, now in Christ we are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I'm coming to a close. The wife will come to the music. Thank you, Lord. Some of you here tonight, you will, when you leave, you will back out of your parking space. And you'll look in that rear view mirror as you back out. But when you get out of your parking space and you decide to move forward, and I hope you do. You pull it down in the drive. Take your eyes off of the rearview mirror because in front of you there's a piece of glass called the windshield. And it's a whole lot bigger piece of glass. So take your eyes off of the rearview mirror, church, and look through the windshield because your future's in front of you. That's right. It's That's not right. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. That's right. To give you a future and to give you a hope. Mm -hmm. Don't give you hope, bro. Right. Was this little baby? You want in prayer for this little baby? Yes. yes right. Bring this baby. That's good. You may be here tonight and you may have received a bad medical report. Doctor may be telling you that things just don't look very good and it looks hopeless. But God has the ability to overrule that doctor. I've seen him do it many times. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So let me say this tonight. Cast none away, therefore, your confidence. 
which has great recompense and reward. Don't you ever count God out of the situation. I want to encourage you tonight. If you're at a place and you feel like you're ready to let go, just hold on a little longer. Because this thing is winding down. Please, don't give your hope up. Be a key of L. L.
always said something, maybe to encourage someone. Certainly don't want to discourage anybody. That's right. Hope that we have said something to encourage you. Maybe you want to run on just a little bit longer.
Amen. To worship you and praise you. And again, Lord, we ask that you keep your hand of protection upon Brother and Sister Grace and Shana yeah. on their way home tomorrow. And also on Sister Jennifer and Sister Sabrina on their way home back. Uh, also, Lord, these are traveling. All of them, Lord, we ask that you would bless, bless those that wasn't able to be here today, Lord. Uh, we, we pray, Lord, that you would just help them uh, in, in the need and the situation in their heart and life. We'll just give you the praise for in Jesus' name. Shake hands. Amen. One with another and be friendly. Amen. Tell Brother Bodie how much you enjoyed this, uh, the word tonight. Amen.